This week's episode of the Art Tactic Podcast is sponsored by ArtBase. Are you managing an art collection, an artist studio, or a gallery? Is it time to bring your collection management skills up to a professional level? We think so. Well, ArtBase is the right software to manage your art business. ArtBase allows you to track your artworks and contacts in an easy-to-use, powerful database. You just enter your data once and use that data to generate reports, offers, contracts, and much more. They've got a brand new version out with a whole new look that can be used on the cloud from any location on any device. So what are you waiting for? Go to artbase.com now to learn more and be sure to mention Art Tactic for a 15% discount. Thanks for listening to the Art Tactic Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Green. Hope everyone's doing well and staying safe. It seems that things are finally really turning positive everywhere and art scenes across the world are opening up, which is really incredible news. And it feels like everyone's starting to plan out their travel schedules, which art fairs they'd like to attend, going to cities or maybe even different countries to see specific museum shows or gallery exhibitions, and studio visits with artists feel like they're even on the rise. So overall, there's a lot of optimism, and we hope that continues over the next several weeks and months. We wanted to chat about a variety of different aspects of the art market and where things stand around 14 months after the beginning of the pandemic. And so in this week's episode of the podcast, we're joined by Philip Hoffman, founder and CEO of the Fine Art Group. You know, I remember when I first really started participating in the art world in 2007, and the Fine Art Group was called the Fine Art Fund back then. They had a few funds that invested in different collecting categories in the art market. Well, since then, the Fine Art Fund has come a long way. It's now the Fine Art Group, and it includes a variety of different services to collectors beyond just their investment vehicles. The Fine Art Group just acquired Paul Mall Art Advisors, a prominent art appraisal and advisory firm. So we wanted to have Philip on to chat about that, as well as get his unique perspective on the current state of the art market and what he sees for the market moving forward. I think the way the art market's recovered so rapidly since the pandemic is very interesting, and a lot of people are trying to figure out if the art market is inflated or if this is just the beginning. So I think it's helpful and important to hear different opinions on these types of things. So I hope you enjoyed the episode with Philip. Thanks so much for listening. Philip, thanks so much for joining us. How have you been? Very well. Excited to be on on the podcast. Absolutely. So the Fine Art Group made some noise recently as you just acquired Paul Mall Art Advisors, a prominent art appraisal and advisory firm. It's interesting to see this kind of consolidation in the art world as we're also seeing a lot of consolidation in the gallery space recently. Tell us about Paul Mall and why you decided to pursue acquiring them at this time. The Fine Art Group has five businesses, investment, lending, money against art, advisory, acting as agent on behalf of the clients and valuation. Most of our business was based in the Middle East, Asia, and Europe, and, and relatively modest in America. And the rationale for buying Pall Mall Art Advisors was to massively expand our presence in the US regionally and headquartered in the US and Philadelphia. So we're nearly doubling our staff to uh, over 50 full-time staff and approximately another 60 consultants. So probably in total worldwide, 100, 110 people. And we're adding some massive art valuation business and significant advisory business to our already quite interesting tally of what we do in the fine art group. So um, I've been in business and founded the fine art group 20 years ago, and Pal Mal was founded about 10 years ago. Um, and both have grown pretty exponentially. And so this is a, a, a perfect marriage of a um, world-class business in the United States with what I think has been a really interesting world-class business that we built up uh, in Europe, um, Middle East, and Asia. As you touched on, the Fine Art Group now offers a lot of different services to collectors. What do you see as the future of services to collectors, and what services are collectors looking for at this time? So I think with the change in the market, the high-pressure sales going on at the auctions by the dealers. Clients need independent and smart advice. And that's the probably key element 
that over the last 20 years has been fairly lacking. There are probably 4,000 art advisors out there, of which smart ones in the world are probably 10 to 15. And so what we have seen, and, and this is, I've evidenced this in all the valuations and, and, and advice we've seen where we've been brought in, is that clients have been led astray into buying things either overpriced, quality overpromised, or, um, or sold second-rate works of art, or, or they, they were, they were, there was a massive sales job going on too many of these clients, and they didn't have really smart advisors whose, whose interests were aligned with the buyer. So that's one side of the business. The investment business is very significant for us, and we've been doing this for 20 years. We're about the only group in the world that have been running investment funds and art uh, uh, investment uh, products for that period of time. Uh, and then acting as agent, obviously, we're well known as having acted for the uh, infamous uh, Alfani collection that sold at Christie's in 2019. We acted as the agent on behalf of that major sale, which made 110 million just at auction, let alone what went through um, privately. Uh, and so we see um, we see a gap in the market, and we're about the only people that are filling this gap right now, which is um, a cross section of of um, a a grade. Uh, advisory and investment and lending uh, businesses. I do agree with you. There's a lot of layers within the art world and getting good advice is important and actually pretty hard to find. Another aspect of Paul Mall is their art appraisal business. With prices fluctuating so much at auction lately and with more auctions, we have more data points. How do you and Paul Mall advise clients on the importance of appraisals and the frequency at which artwork should be appraised, if, for example, it's for insurance purposes? Yes. So uh, Pall Mall Art Advisors, and it will be now rebranded under the Fine Art Group, do in excess of $12 billion of um, appraisals and valuations um, uh, per year. And the Fine Art Group have been involved about $5 billion. Uh, of, of so between us, we're probably somewhere between 17 and 20 billion. Uh, and what we're seeing is there are two types of requests. One is for insurance uh, and just understanding what, what clients have got. And that's something that Pal Mal Art Advisors were um, pretty well number one in the US at. And uh, also now clients want things valued in order to um, establish you know, how much of these works of art gone up? Um, what do we insure them for? Should we think about, what should we think about doing with these? Estate planning, philanthropy. So you know, attached to the appraisal is a whole load of requests from clients asking for a full suite of, of services to help clients uh, work out. Because a lot of clients built amazing collections just by allocating a certain amount of their wealth every year to building a, a wonderful collection and suddenly at the end of 10 or 20 years they found they've got one five ten fifty a billion dollar you know million or billion a billion dollars of art and they built it up and didn't realize quite how much money has gone up and quite how much it's worth today and our, our recommendation is that you know the appraisal should be reviewed annually sort of on a you know, once it's set up and computerized and, and the input has gone in, then there's a certain amount of, of um, just sort of indexing up uplift. But then every three or four years, I recommend certainly the top works being reappraised and re-looked at because certain elements of the market have moved very swiftly, both upwards and one or two areas have moved downwards. That's exactly right, and it's something I'm frequently thinking about and preaching to collectors. You take a look at a category like contemporary art, prices can rise so quickly. You want to make sure you're adequately covered from an insurance perspective, and if some other markets have softened, why pay extra money to be overinsured? So you have an interesting perspective as the fine art group includes an art investment fund, an art advisory, art financing, now appraisals. I'd love to hear your sense on the state of the art market from when COVID initially started to where we are today. Well, I've been in the market uh, for 32 years, having started off being involved in running Christie's for 12 years and then running the fine art group for 20 years. And I would say the two periods I remember most vividly was 2008-9 when the market 
really tumbled and March 2020 when COVID hit. And in both cases, the art market froze. And I would say for three months, um, we were all in sort of no man's land. I, what on earth is going to happen to the market? If the stock market's tanking by 30, 30%, 20%, you know, and, and people are worried about their safety and their health, um, is art even going to be on the agenda for the next two or three months? And I remember discussing this with um, Guillaume Chiruti at Christie's, with Charlie Stewart at Sotheby's, uh, with with the head of Pace and with Mark Spiegler. Um, and everyone was in the same boat. Everybody felt slightly uh, horrified at what might happen to the market. But by, um, Ju- you know, by the end of June, we saw Christian Sotheby putting on incredibly brave face and putting up, you know, three, four hundred million dollars of art and it's doing pretty well. And since then, the markets got stronger. What we haven't had is the, the, um, the impact of all that cash, all that printing of money that is still yet to hit the art market because many people haven't been able to travel, to go to fairs, to go to the auctions. And many of our clients, we look after clients who can spend anywhere between five and $500 million a year on art. Many of those clients haven't been able to travel. And because they can't travel, they won't buy. So I would say half our clients are active and half our clients are waiting. And the amounts of money they're waiting with and what they may be prepared to buy once they can travel, I think will be huge. So I think there will be a surge in the art market in 2020, end of 2021 and into 2022. I think they'll see, you'll see some quality works of art. I mean, we act as agent for some of the top collectors and we're advising them that by November, November, when travel, we think will permit, with Art, Mark, Art Basel in Miami probably hitting, we will be suggesting to clients to potentially put some very important works, whether it be jewelry, whether it be impressionist, modern, contemporary, whether it be vintage motor cars. Um, we're involved in all the sectors, some 30 or 40 different sectors, American paintings now, American Americana. Um, very wide. I think that 2020 one, the end of will be very strong. And I think that with travel happening, people have got a lot of money saved up and they're ready to spend. And I think we're looking at a very interesting market for art, acquisitions of great art, top rate art over the next five years. I hear a variety of opinions on the art market. Some argue there's a lot of opportunity looking forward. Others feel the market's incredibly inflated and prices are already so high at auction. Perhaps both viewpoints are correct. Relating to the art investment funds you manage, are you seeing interesting value opportunities in the broader art market at the moment? Two aspects. One is we've raised, um, we've got about uh, about $800 million available to lend money against art. So I'm very bullish about values on the contemporary and modern impressionist and jewelry front. And we will lend, um, we're prepared to lend that out. And that is creating some interesting opportunities for people to buy even more art um, or um, free up cash from their portfolio um, to use in their businesses. So the growth of the art financing business has been very significant for us. Um, and we're looking to be you know, in the number one or number two spot over the next few years in art financing. Um, but alongside that, um, we are very, I, I'm very focused on creating the next round of art investment products uh, for 2021-22. And how that will be laid out and, and how that will be launched, uh, I've yet to finalize. Uh, we've run you know, eight art investment funds over the last 20 years, and we've really enjoyed it. And we've made money, I think, on 90% of the art that we have invested in. And so I think there are a very, very interesting opportunities ahead of us, but they're not the same ones as we saw in the past. You know, we've seen massive price rises in Basquiat or Warhol um, or Riley um, uh, uh, or uh, Ed Rouché. But will all of those keep going? Some will. And I think some will have run, run out of steam. Um, and, you know, we scan about a thousand artists. And we probably put our money 
you know, we'll, we'll put a few hundred million dollars over the next couple of years into, um, into probably about 30 or 40 of those artists, very much concentrated. And I think you've got to sort of see the opportunity. You've got to focus. The sweet spot for us is very much in the, where I would term a quarter of a million dollars to $5 million. Um, when you're playing at the 20 to $50 million mark, you know, that becomes risky and there is more of a roulette wheel being rolled up. It'll definitely be interesting to see how the art market plays out over the next few years. Philip, we appreciate you coming on to the podcast to chat with us about your recent acquisition of Paul Mall, as well as hearing your thoughts on the state of the art market. And if our listeners want to learn more about the Fine Art Group, what's the best way for them to do that? So um, you can contact uh, Philip Hoffman at fineartgroup.com. Um, so Philip Hoffman at fineartgroup.com. Or you can go on our website, um, www.fineartgroup.com uh, and we'd be thrilled to hear from uh, any of your listeners uh, you know whether it be appraisals whether it be investment whether it be borrowing money whether it be uh, advisory uh, whether it be your first purchase or um, buying the fi- finale to your collection or whether it be putting your deciding to sell your collection whether it be privately or at auction uh, they're very interesting business and team i've built up and i'm very excited to um work with clients around the world and it's been a very exciting journey over tw- this is our 20th year of, of running the fine arts group and i'm very much enjoying it and um thank you of course i remember when i first entered the art world in 2007 and back then you were going strong as the fine art fund and you still are so it's really incredible well, it's been fun <laughs> i've enjoyed pretty well every moment not every moment pretty well every that's great to hear thanks again philip we really appreciate it pleasure thank you we want to thank ArtBase for sponsoring this week's episode of the art tactic podcast are you managing an art collection an artist studio or gallery is it time to bring your collection management skills up to a professional level well ArtBase is the right software to manage your art business ArtBase allows you to track your artworks and contacts in an easy to use powerful database All you do is enter your data once, and you use that data to generate reports, offers, contracts, and a bunch more. They've got a brand new version out with a whole new look that can be used in the cloud from any location on any device. So go to artbase.com now to learn more, and be sure to mention Art Tactic for a 15% discount.